So a few words about classifying the glaucomas. There are lots of ways to consider the glaucomas and all of them are flawed in some way. In this curriculum, we'll divide them by age of onset, mechanism of pressure elevation, and whether they're primary or secondary. We usually consider glaucoma to be congenital if it occurs at three years of age or less. Because at about three years old, the cornea stops enlarging in response to elevated intraocular pressure. The eye itself can continue to grow. The sclera can, can, can grow up through about age 10, so the patient can get more myopic if the glaucoma is poorly controlled. But usually age 3 is a cutoff for congenital glaucoma. Juvenile from 3 to 35 or 40 years, it varies from, from source to source. And then adult is over age 35. And juvenile, I think, because it's uncommon for someone to have glaucoma in that age range. And then, even though pressure is not part of the definition of glaucoma, we still classify glaucomas according to the mechanism of pressure elevation. Obviously, normal tension glaucoma, the pressure is not elevated. But we consider why the pressure is up, because most people the pressure is up. So it can be developmental, closed angle, open angle, or mixed mechanism. So in developmental glaucomas like primary congenital and Sturge-Weber, Axenfeld-Rieger syndrome, the trabecular meshwork did not develop properly and does not work properly. In closed angle glaucoma, the iris lies over the trabecular meshwork and blocks access of the aqueous humor to the trabecular meshwork. In the open angle glaucomas, the meshwork is visible. Aqueous can get to the trabecular meshwork, but the meshwork is not functioning normally. And then there are mixed mechanism sorts of glaucomas that have both open angle and closed angle components. And is there an identifiable cause? So is it a primary disease or is it secondary? If it's not identifiable as a, a secondary glaucoma, we call it primary. In other words, we really don't know why the patient has this disease. So in developmental, you would divide it into primary congenital and then all the secondaries. And I'm not going to have big tables that have all of these in here because as we work through this curriculum, we're going to talk about all these. But secondaries would include things like Axenfeld-Rieger syndrome, Sturge-Weber, Peter Anomaly, Aniridia, etc. Closed angle, you can have primary pupillary block angle closure or secondary glaucomas, either with pupillary block, in which case a laser iridotomy should be beneficial, and that would be things like phacomorphic or ectopia lentis, and then without pupillary block, where laser iridotomy would not be helpful. Things like neovascular, ice syndrome, ciliary body swelling, etc. For open angle glaucoma, primary open angle glaucoma, sometimes called chronic open angle glaucoma, is the most common glaucoma in the United States. But there are lots of secondary glaucomas, pigmentary exfoliation syndrome, corticosteroid induced, etc. There's some families of diseases that can cause either open or closed angle glaucoma. Inflammation can cause angle closure from synechia, but it can also cause an open angle glaucoma from trabeculitis or scleritis. Lens induced glaucoma can be phacomorphic which is pupillary block, angle closure, or it could be something like phacolytic, which is open angle. And tumors can cause both open and closed angle forms of glaucoma. There's a category called mixed mechanism, which is a little vague. So one can have an angle that is closed, 
have an iridotomy, have the angle open, and yet the pressure remains elevated. The angle's not really closed anymore, but one might call that a mixed mechanism glaucoma. Or sometimes you'll have an open angle glaucoma and after a period of time develop angle closure. An example might be exfoliation syndrome where the angle is open, but as the lens becomes loose, then that can lead to a, a pupillary block or angle closure sort of glaucoma. We also have people who are glaucoma suspects who don't have glaucoma, but we're watching them for glaucoma. Ocular hypertension means that the intraocular pressure is outside of the normal range without apparent optic nerve head damage or visual field loss. So really these are people who are at risk for glaucoma but don't have glaucoma. And we'll have a whole section on ocular hypertension. One can have suspicious looking nerves without visual field loss. Some people call that pre-parametric glaucoma term that I don't particularly like. And I think some of the new imaging modalities like uh, OCT have helped differentiate those people into being probably normal or being glaucomatous. And people who have a very strong family history of glaucoma can be considered glaucoma suspects. You're following them, anticipating that they have a higher than baseline risk of developing glaucoma. So just a brief introduction. We'll discuss all of these diseases individually, and it doesn't seem helpful to discuss them all now. Just to outline the overview of how we think about glaucomas and categories based on age and mechanism, and then primary or secondary.